Hi everyone and welcome! Today I would like to share with you 10 ways to take care of your physical and mental health while enjoying your favorite activity, sewing. Please feel free to add your own ideas and suggestions in the comments. That would be very useful for everyone indeed. So let's get started. To begin with, remember to keep your eyes healthy. They really are precious and nothing is better than natural light to work. You can use, for instance, your ironing table and bring it as close as possible to your window. If you sew in the evening or at night when children are asleep, use a good quality light and avoid at all cost low intensity light bulbs. I have in my studio a lamp that replicates the light of the sun and that is dimmable. It's one of my best investment and if you are interested, you'll find a link to it in the description box. I highly recommend you be very careful with your back and neck. It seems obvious, yet many craftspersons suffer from back and neck pains after many years of working in bent positions with working spaces that are not suitable. The best is to alternate times in a seated position, sewing at the machine for instance, with times in a standing position like tracing patterns and cutting fabric. And that with a table that is always set at the right height according to the job at hand and your own size. In my video 5 luxurious gifts for sewists, I mentioned the standing desk which offers these possibilities and that I planned to buy for myself. Well, it is a gift that was very generously gifted to me by the brand Koyu. I have to say that my back and my neck are truly grateful for this wonderful gift, so thank you. It was very easy to set up and start using. I had help from my little helper, from the instructions book as well as the instruction video which is very welcome. This desk allows me to work at the sewing machine with a height that is slightly higher than a normal table and it also allows me to work in an upright position to trace patterns, cut fabric or to film a YouTube video like this one. I just have to press a button and I can set the height that I like the best. To be completely honest, I was quite worried that the desk wouldn't be sturdy enough to withstand the vibrations of my machines, but the size I choose, 120 by 80 cm, remains quite unbothered, except maybe when I go full speed with my angry serger, but that's quite minimal and it does not bother me at all. Also, I am quite petite, still I weight my weight and the desk doesn't seem to complain. In a word, again a big big thank you to Koyo for this wonderful and useful gift. Third idea, protect your hands and fingers. If you only sew once in a while, this advice might not be so relevant for you, but if you sew on a regular basis and long hours at a time, and if you love beautiful hand finishes, I am sure you have understood what I am about to talk about, the thimble. The one our grandmothers and grandfathers used so often. Of course, nowadays we do not hand sew that much and our sewing machines are quite powerful, yet keep this advice in mind, think about your fingers. We are not always as lucky as to have a big wide cutting table at home and most of the time we do have to be on all fours on the kitchen floor to measure out curtains, to cut the pattern pieces of the coat or to trace a maxi circle skirt. Remember to really be easy on your joints and especially your knees. They are precious and fragile so don't forget to use a soft pillow under them it will be so much more comfortable and it prevents pains and injuries. Remember to take breaks. Stretch your body, go outside and walk and don't forget that it is important to have a good night's sleep to recharge your batteries. Sometimes it is more useful to really force yourself to take a break and then to go back to your work with a clearer mind, with more focus and energy. 
I do encourage you to really learn how to manage your energy as well as you do your time. You will see how efficient and productive you will become. Now, do not compare yourself to others. Sewing is not a race nor a competition. It is an art that requires the best of every one of us. It does bring tremendous joy if we know how to work at our own pace, how to listen to our inner rhythm and be mindful of the time we have. One can be tempted to want to sew faster, to sew more, to buy more patterns, more fabric and so on. But in truth, excess rarely equals satisfaction. Do less, but do better. Doing less does not mean making a worse job. On the contrary, doing less allows us to make a better work. What are the materials you love to work with? What are the fabrics you will truly wear? Are they going to last the test of time? What pattern would you like to buy? Are they right for your body type? Are you going to wear what you sew? Take the time to really think through all the details of each sewing project you undertake and make it nice and beautiful from the start to the end. A well thought and well made garment brings so much more joy and satisfaction than three or four quickly and badly sewn pieces of clothing that you will never wear. When our minds are filled with stressful thoughts and feelings, one too many projects, ideas and endless to-do lists, we can quickly become overwhelmed, anxious and stressed. Tidying up always settles me down. Sweeping the floor of my atelier removes threads and fabric scraps as well as unwelcomed thoughts. Putting things away helps getting my thoughts in order, eliminating feelings and ideas that clutter an already full hard drive, my own mind. Having a space that is clean and tidy truly brings peace, relief, serenity and appeasement. Learn to appreciate the time that you get to spend with your work without wishing that everything would be done already and without rushing to the next task at hand. If you do not enjoy the time that you have with yourself and with your work, you are always projecting your mind in the future and never truly grateful for the time being. Slow down and truly indulge in your life. It's quite personal, of course, but the projects that bring me joy and satisfaction the most are the projects made out of recycled materials or second-hand clothes that I already have on hand. My challenge this year is to ban any sort of shopping for fabrics, except of course if I have a specific order like a wedding dress, for instance. Instead, I use my stash of fabric, tired clothes, all sheets, etc. I buy nothing new, I make use of what I've got. For instance, my son wishes to have bunny ears to go Easter eggs hunting. Instead of ordering them online, I suggested we made them together. So here is what we recycled for this special mission, bunny ears. An old headband, an old piece of wire to make the internal structure of the ears, some scraps of an old dress that I retouched for a client, with the authorization of the client, of course, to make the inside of the ears. They had to be green and shiny, so that's perfect. And finally, for the outer ears and to cover the headband, I used a scrap of an old and very soft baby blanket. In a nutshell, the mission Bunny Ears was a great success. My little boy is so very proud of the work he accomplished and I am so very happy yes, of the quality time one, we got okay. to spend together. We have to lay the fabric flat here. Oui, c'est ce qui dépasse. It's going to cut the fabric. Yes. Voila. Are you ready? Yes. You want to do it? Okay. You let the fabric slide. Obviously, when you sew with the child, you have to set aside a little bit more time than usual to complete a project and you have to lower your expectations. But even though our ears are slightly crooked, what a pleasure to sew together as a family. Voila! Dear friends, this is the end of this video and it is now your turn. What are your ideas and suggestions to preserve your health 
and your serenity and to increase your pleasure thanks to sewing. I look forward to reading your comments. Bye bye. A bientôt.